finished the genomics panel here at Big Data at Stanford, and I'm here with Jill Hagencourt, who works at 23andMe, a personal genetic company. Jill, how are you doing today? Great, thanks. Um, so tell me a little bit about what 23andMe does. So 23andMe is a, um, it's really a consumer empowerment company in healthcare, and we, we use DNA as a way to engage people in their own healthcare. Um, in a, in a direct-to-consumer route or in an easy access route, we let people um, order online, we'll send them a spit kit, you spit from home and you put it back in the mail and a few weeks later, we'll send you an email that says welcome to you. Mm -hmm. And then you can go in and um, you can look at different aspects of your DNA. Um, right now we're working with the FDA to bring back health information that you can see in your DNA and currently in the United States we can just show you ancestry information um, as well as relative finders, um, how much Neanderthal you have. Um, you can also look at interesting traits about yourself, um, things like you know, do you have likely brown eyes or likely straight blonde hair. Um, and it's just a way for people to start to think about how genetics works and how genetics works in families. Um, the number one thing that people do after doing 23andMe is they have a uh, conversation with their families about their health history. That's pretty cool. Have you done it yourself? Oh, I have. I've done myself, my kids, all my nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, my my 95-year-old grandmother. We've all done it. So, and we did what everybody else did. Is we that once we got our results, we had this really fun, engaging health, and, you know, conversation about. Oh, I have a risk for blood clots. Do you have that risk for blood clots? Have you ever had a blood clot? And really learned that I had first-degree relatives with blood clots as well as the genetic variant. Then um, I, I otherwise wouldn't have known that without 23andMe. Tell me, how does big data play into that? So the, the big data is multi-dimensional here. So it's, it's again, the ability to, you know, five, 10 years ago when we looked at somebody's DNA, we, we typically would look at one single variant in their DNA. Now we can, for almost the same price, or getting close to the same price, look at their entire exome. Um, and then, you know, getting to their whole genome at, at a consumer price is really coming in the next, I don't know, we can debate whether it's three or five years, but it's coming. And within 10 years, it's, it's likely that everybody's going to have their genome sequence on their smartphones. And so then you have to start to combine, okay, here's what the DNA says, what is going on with the person, right? What is your heart rate? What is your health history, right? And all of the wearables and all the data that comes off the wearables out of the electronic health records, right, can all start to be combined and then your big data gets multidimensional. Which is why we're all here. <laughs> so you heard it here first, in 10 years, your entire genome on your smartphone. For Big Data, this is Marin Shapiro.